Good afternoon, Corvallis. You're listening to Second String Sports, 88.7 FM KBVR Corvallis. My name is Jake McGrady. Logan McGinnis. And Gran Ocampo. We and back at once it. Once again, 3 to 4 p.m. every Friday, back at it. Probably the uh, biggest show that we got so far. Of the term, yeah. Of the term. Because it's the biggest sporting event. Super Bowl. Arguably. Episode. In sports. For all the uh, non-sports fans out there looking forward to a little... Katy Perry jiggle in action at halftime. Some commercials, you know. <laughs> Some comedic <laughs> commercials. Guys, you know what? I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> I, I am here so I don't get fined. Yeah. I mean, I guess me too. Yeah, I guess we all are. I don't just don't want KBVR <laughs> to find me. I'm just here so I don't Man, get fined. Man, I wish I was a soundbite. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you guys don't know what that's from, we'll be uh, getting into that later today. But we got... Pretty uh, pretty jam-packed show here. We're going to start it off with a little uh, Oregon State men's basketball talk. Kind of a or, uh, disappointing Oregon State loss a few days ago, but, you know, it's fine. Looking forward. is a big, big, big game on the horizon. So once we get that out of the way, we got some uh, NBA talk for the middle of the show, some uh, all-star talk. And I know uh, me and Grant will have some very strong, savagely yeah. worded fire emoji discussion topics on a certain all-star snub rambling yep yeah yep. i had to fit all the adjectives into one <laughs> sentence to describe my absolute pain anguish and pissed offness nice yeah there you go yeah i like that anyway after that we're gonna move on to the bulk of the show which uh we want all of you guys to participate in thoughts concerns predictions Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl 49. This Sunday, Patriot Seahawks, Marshawn Lynch talk, Tom Brady talk, Sherman talk. Yeah. Might be uh, in the hospital instead of at the game, which would yeah. suck. That would uh, not be ideal for the Seahawks there. Mm, I hope that little baby stays in there if he knows what's good for him. <laughs> <laughs> you better stay put. Just curl up in the womb for one more day, then pop out on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is Second String Sports. Before we get into it, if we want to give the social media shout-outs uh, to ourselves, because we can. I'm at McGrady 7 At LT McGinnis. And at Grant Ocampo. Or you can hit us up on the show Twitter at Second String KBVR, or of course just hashtag Second String Sports, hashtag Second SS. Tweet at us during the show. You want to hop in the debate. Any Anything we talk about, you got an opinion, uh, or you want us to talk about something else. Uh, in the sporting world, just tweet at us. We we really anything, don't we don't really, really don't care. We will say your opinions on air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we may have to reword them, but yes, we will word for word almost say what you you want to say to us. So uh, keep up with the show. Just turn up on Twit. Anything anything you want to say, especially on Facebook. Anyway, next up, Oregon State basketball. Oregon State basketball. Go Beavs. Mm -hmm. Go Beavs, Arizona, number six. Um, you know we had a tough loss the other day versus Arizona State, fifty-five seventy-three. Yeah, fifty-five seventy-three. Um, you know we were just never in danger. I, I don't know. It wasn't know. exactly ideal. Arizona State was never really in danger of losing that game. I don't know. I mean, from it start, to, like from, from start, start to finish, end. it was kind of just a complete. Uh, I wouldn't say domination, but they just kept them at arm's length the whole game. Yeah, they. Uh, they were just draining threes at the start, and they just – they Arizona State just, you know, we've been the best, uh, you know, three-point defense in the Pac-12 this year. And yeah. it was uh, – they got – you know, they ran us and they played us out of our game, like our, our kind of our, our comfort just, zone. Mm -hmm. Because they – they were running up and down the court, and that made us want to run up and down the court. And – uh, they were shooting corner threes, and you know, they, they were made. Some of the shots for Arizona State when we were watching it was just like, that. Did that really just go in? They were just on fire. Uh, it was Shaquille McKenzie scored 17 points for Arizona State, and uh, yeah, and he hasn't really played, you know, for a little while. But yeah, Arizona State had two or three players suspended. Yeah, team rules. So. Mm -hmm. You know, that hurt him, but I, 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 I think the players who didn't get as much time to play just stepped up and yeah. showed what they could do. Well, it that's what is like, you know, we played zone. I felt like we played zone for most of the game. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's it, it when it, when teams are just uh, hot, they're hot, and, and if you, they beat the zone, they beat the zone. So, it, but it it was just one little hiccup. Uh, you know, it, it's gonna. We really needed that game, especially because Arizona is gonna be really tough. It, they're gonna be head hunting us because we, you know, we over we overtook the throne on them. It was kind of now they're they're gonna come out today and they're gonna be pissed. So. Yeah, they have one of the best home environments in the Pac-12. Yeah. So. I, I mean, like, uh, for the Arizona State game, it was kind of bound to happen at some point. The whole, uh, you know, just shooting, raining threes like crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, it was bound it to was happen. A, it was a three fest. Yeah, exactly. I mean, some team is going to come out and do that as well as we're defending it. You know, some of those shots, like Logan said, were uh, they were tough shots. Definitely. Yeah. Hand in the face. and They were feeling it. It was, it was a Sun Devil's night, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah. a loss is a loss. We're lucky enough to say that we have not experienced <laughs> as many losses as we expected going into the season. So, I mean, we'll take it. I mean, why not? Yeah, yeah fourth in Pac-12, 14-6. Can't complain. Fine with it. Can't complain. Exactly. They can we make wanna, it all up tonight. Want to yeah. look forward to our round two of the best basketball game that we've ever witnessed live. Oregon State versus Arizona round two. Yeah. I, I it, don't know. In Arizona, it. what do you guys think? It's... Uh, Arizona, tough to call. Arizona came out and you know they were, came out strong against Oregon this last game, pumbled them by like twenty yeah. some points. I think it was yeah. like twenty four or something. I yeah. thought it was like ninety to fifty eight or something like that. Ooh. I think it might have been thirty. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, they were cooking. Yeah, so it's gonna. You can already tell that the, the players are gonna be mad and it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game, but. Really, if, if if our guys stick to the game plan like we have been, and we haven't been as solid on the road, I think we're two and five or something, yeah, something, something like, like that. Not nearly as solid. Yeah, nah, not nearly as solid at home because you know we're protecting Gil like it's nobody's business. But protect Gil. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, Mal- Malcolm has been showing up. He had fourteen points in the last game, but other than that, uh, I think also you know Gary Payton. He had 23, so it, it's just tough, you know, when you don't have a, you know, a good, a, you know, like a a, a deep bench, uh, yeah. you know, with having Vic out, it's, it's you know, you're relying on players like Sanders and, uh, you know, the, the, all of our walk-ons that come in on me, like, you know, come in this Arizona game, we're going to need you, so it's like... Yeah, we pretty much... I mean, we have a six-man rotation pretty much now yeah. with Vic Robbins out. I mean... Yeah, it, and going back to that game against USC, uh, yeah, we that was also a game. We didn't talk about the USC game. No, but, we didn't. Uh, yeah, because... Yeah, the, we weren't able to, to yeah, talk about the yeah, crowd at that know, game. Ta- we'll talk about that real quick, wow. but uh, you know, we'll talk about it in a second, but you know, in that USC game, Jarmal really... Uh, impressed a lot of people because Tinkle goes to Jarmar and just says, uh, Jarmal and just goes, "Hey, I want you to show up big. I want you to, you know, without mm-hmm. Vic, we we need a little spark and energy off the bench." And Jarmal really did that and gets the USC game. And the USC game was it was a show out. It was uh, the biggest show out that those players have probably witnessed in their basketball it, careers here at was, Oregon State. It was just great to see. It was great to you know we've lived through the dark days of Gill. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I remember the time you could drop a popcorn curl in Gill and hear it like it was a car horn. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was just great to see. Unbelievable! It was great to see both sides. Uh, fill Literally up. filled to the absolute brim. Yeah, it, even it's like kind of ga- like getting close to game time. It was like, oh wow, yeah. look, it's it's getting filled. It's getting yeah. pretty close to the top. <laughs> uh, and, and it's it, not gonna happen. And, it's like, not gonna and happen. then ten, <laughs> like ten minutes in the game, yep. it's like it's packed on the, even on the sides where. Uh, on the on the corners of the gill, it was just it was an amazing sight to see. It was great. It was awesome, and I loved it. And it, Gill was loud, and Gill is going to get louder, and it's going to be it, it's going to be a tough place to play. Uh, you know, Arizona they have a great home crowd, but it's going to be uh, you know whenever people come to Gill, you know, it's going to be kind of oh crap, we have to yeah. go to Gill. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pat yeah. Gill. Another another thing to note on that game, there were a bunch of football recruits too at the USC game. To d- Which so to helps. see that crowd and yeah. the you know the whole tradition and just the, the it fandom just packed just the and loud. beaver nation culture exactly it was a mm-hmm. sunny day it was uh, it was almost perfect for uh for uh, as good as process. it could get yeah exactly yeah, exactly had a couple people uh commit after that too so mm-hmm. that was great to see mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. Exactly. And, and it, it's, it's just it, a good, it, good time. It just, everything falls back to Tinkle. It's just. <laughs> it literally. Uh, that man is just amazing. I, I just. He's a myth. He's a myth? He's a myth. I still don't think he's real. <laughs> it's too good to be true. How how did we get that higher? How did we he's possibly know? He's just a god and a legend. He's, he's, the, bas- a he's the basketball it's god. Just, yeah, that's true. He's not. He's oh yeah. He's not a myth. He's real. We have uh, we have emailed Tinkle uh, yep. for maybe a possibility viewing of a show, maybe this term, but they may be busy. Yep. So you know, hey, under, we're, under, we'll, we'll try. Understandably we're per- busy. We're per- we're persistent. Might hopefully we can get him on in spring. That'd be a lot. That'd be Man, a lot of fun. That, w- that would be something special. So look forward to that. We're going to try to our best abilities because yeah, because we we honest, need him to speak. We honestly love Tinkle. We know everybody in Corvallis loves Tinkle. So everyone knows his name. It's yeah. Tink, and yeah. the nation nation's taking notice too. Yeah. Tinkle, Tinkle's famous. Yeah, and he's like George Clooney. You know, even at this, I think I saw a, a stat last year where uh, when we won the USC game, at, when we won uh, that was I think we have fourteen wins now. Uh, a, with like a Craig Robinson team, we haven't. We probably won like two, or not even like two, but it was like a couple seasons, not that many, of Craig Robinson winning fourteen or more in a season, and yeah. King comes in here <laughs> with this team and does it. It's just <laughs> give okay. that man a raise. Yeah, give that man a raise. Yeah, and then, even that like. It gets me excited not just for Oregon State basketball, but for Oregon State football because yes. you know if you, the whole flip flop of the culture is like, yeah, it, not the, like just like it, with uh, Gary Anderson coming Gary. in, it's just uh, you know a different culture that can come in and maybe even just totally flip a program around, and that's yep. that's going to be awesome to see. Fun fact: yep. it may rattle me, but in my marketing class, and I don't know if he told you this too, but. Uh, Coach Anderson may be coming in to uh, grade our final presentations in that class because they're on cheese. And he's from Wisconsin. Did you uh, know about that? I, I didn't. Yeah, yeah he, I don't he think he said He informed our that. class. Yep. He's reaching out to the coach to come uh, judge our final presentations. Wonderful. Well, I'd like to... Uh, <laughs> I'd like to showcase my cheese skills to Coach Anderson. <laughs> yeah, that makes... Yeah. I, it makes I mean, sense. I'm, yeah, I guess. I, cheese. <laughs> Wisconsin. He's from Wisconsin. Sounds kind of cheesy. Mm. Uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was a quiet drum roll. Yes, yeah, that was. Anyway, it's just a whole it's just a whole new time in in Oregon State history right now. Wayne Tinkle, Gary Anderson, sports with a Z. I like it. Any final thoughts on the uh, score prediction for the Arizona game? If we want to get into it, I don't want to do a score prediction. I just want to say that I know you think it's going to be a good game. I just know the Beavers are going to come out and they're going to play tough. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, even after the Arizona State game, I think Tinkle's going to have them ready and have them prepared. And we'll see what I'm, happens. I'm just We've going to say done that it once. We're treading into dangerous, it's, it's dangerous a, territory. It's going to be really. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game. Arizona. Arizona is one of the toughest places to play in the country. Up there. It, I think it's up there, top five, if yeah. not number two or number one. Yeah, and yeah, their, their fans are crazy. So their fans are NBA fans. Yeah. And yeah. It's just it'll uh, be a good game. Yeah, it's gonna be. We don't want to jinx it, but yeah, yeah. What do you think? Uh, that's how I feel. I mean, I don't really want to give a score prediction either, just because this is kind of a game that could go either way. Either way. I mean, it's kind of like it's it's either gonna be close or we're somehow they're gonna come out and yeah, just blow us out early. Yeah. And I mean, I am gonna I'd put my money on us playing hard and keeping it close the yeah. whole game. But uh, you know, Arizona's a great team, so there's always that chance they they pull in Arizona State and just. Exactly. Away, That's what I'm looking forward yeah. to. Well, I think, you know, in the Arizona State game, we we just lost track of shooters and we lost track of just, you know, players inside. And I think, uh, I just think Tico's mm-hmm. going to come out here and be like, I, you know, just take control. Defense, like the defense mentality just has to come back. And I think after that last game, I think it's going to be in the players. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think they'll be refocused and uh, I think it'll be a much better game, mm-hmm. uh, especially just effort wise. 100%. 100. 100. 100. 100 emoji. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to jump right into some NBA discussion, all-star talk, Damian Lillard talk, big blazer game in what, a matter of an hour here? Yeah. Hour or so uh, here, so uh, hour 15. Hour 15, stay tuned for that. Once again, if you want to uh, jump in the debate with us, share your thoughts, it is at Second String KBVR for the show's Twitter, or just hit us up on the personal Twitters, or just hashtag Second String Sports. What do you think? Of Oregon State's basketball season so far. I know we just finished up, but you know, you got a thought on the uh, Arizona game? Hit us up with that. 
And we're probably going to be getting into the biggest chunk of the show here with the NBA and the NFL Super Bowl. So, obviously, share your thoughts on that, too. Once again, this is Second String Sports, KBVR Corvallis, Jake Logan, and Grant every Friday. Stay tuned. Hey, you look a little stressed out. Everything okay? I felt like I spent all my money on books again. I have to pick between books or food. Pause. Fact. The USDA defines food insecurity as having reduced quality, variety, or desirability of diet to multiple indications of disrupted eating patterns and reduced food intake. Fact. The percent of college students experiencing food insecurity can reach up to 59% at some Oregon universities. Fact. The Human Services Resource Center offers bi-weekly food pantries to help subsidize the cost of food for students and community members. If you're interested in learning more, come visit us 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, in Snell 233. See, See you at, at the HSRC. HSRC! And we're back, Second String Sports live in the booth, Jake Logan and Grant. Getting into the uh, most recent news, for all you uh, local Oregonians, Rip City fans out there, Damian Lillard, officially, 100%, snubbed from the, the all-star game every competition i mean by choice i'm sure he didn't compete in the three-point contest but it is just announced that a few days was it two days ago the reserves uh yesterday yesterday the all-star reserves for the west and east were announced and uh damian lillard was surprisingly 100 percent. i was genuinely surprised he was left off the list and then today we all knew that with kobe bryant's injury he obviously was not going to participate well yeah we know that. We knew that. Okay, let's also tell the tell the audience who made the yeah for okay. both. Yeah, okay. Uh, hit him up with the list. I like all it. All right, we got on the Eastern Conference. Uh, we'll talk that first. Uh, we got Jeff Teague, Kyrie Irving, Paul Millsap, and Al Horford. So we have three Atlanta Hawks so far, with Jimmy Butler, Dwayne Wade, who might not play, probably will not, probably yeah. will not, and Chris Bosh. Yeah, and I um, yeah. Looking at that, looking at those reserves, uh, I, I'm all right with it. I understand why there's three Hawk players, you know, there you're on fire. How could you not yeah. put Al Horford? No, I, I, yeah. Or, but if if I had to make one, uh, I couldn't, I can't decide who I would not take. But if I had to take one off, it would be one of the Hawks big men and put in Vucevic. I know. I uh, saw that tweet from you the other day. Take I, out Millsap, right? You said I said Millsap, I, but Millsap. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say which one uh, is not. Like they're both having such a good season, uh, but I like Jeff Teague on there. I like that Jeff Teague got a little, uh, you know, just because uh, I feel like Jeff Teague has been an under the radar point guard for the past few years. So yeah, definitely he has. He's yeah. improved. Teague has every always year. swung under the radar. Yeah, and also another player that I was really happy that got on there was Jimmy Butler because Jimmy, Jimmy. Bo- yeah, Jimmy Butler is exactly. having a fantastic year. And last year he was not even voted to be on the uh, Rising Stars, you know, sophomore rookie challenge. And this year he's he made an All Star game. Yeah. So. That's a, that's a, that's an amazing accomplishment there for Jimmy Butler because I also saw a thing during the summer where Jimmy Butler has nothing, no video games, no TV, no nothing. He has he literally ha- probably lives with a he's like uh, a hermit. He has probably like a a bed and a basketball <laughs> and a basketball. And a like, he, I I, and pretty, some shoes. I read a thing over the summer where all he did was just go to the gym. That's so awesome. Yeah, and just didn't do anything else. And that's uh that's dedication. That's dedication. Right there. That's the complete yeah, 180 of all these that's, other NFL that's a, that's NBA a, players who just screw around. <coughs> Johnny. <laughs> Trash. That's the definition <laughs> of ball is life. It is. True. Yeah. You live and die by the source of your uh, yeah. your income, and he's a professional basketball player, so he does what it takes. Yeah. And I, I've i just been a Vucevic fan. Uh, you have been. I, mm-hmm. I, you're, I, you're obsessed. I, I like big I, – Big Vucey guy? Yeah, I'm just a big, big Vucevic <laughs> fan. I don't know big what Vuce it is. Guy. But he's, he's averaging, you know, it's like 18 and 10 around there. And I, I don't know, just Vucevic is a boss. I just – yeah, but, hey, I don't. I'm, I'm I'm totally fine with the Eastern Conference. I'm totally yeah, cool with what they did because you know, it, they, then it comes to the debate. Oh well, the Hawks have uh, yeah. have the higher record, and but I was listening. To, you know, the other thing I uh, was about Shaq, and Shaq's like, it's just you know, it's just a no, you're Shaq. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> because it's just a you know, a personal accomplishment. It's not a team effort. It's just, but yeah, yeah. And before we move on from the East, we did just get a live tweet in from Evan who says, who would you like to replace D-Wade if we could choose? 
Uh, That's interesting. I I would go either Vucevic or uh, Kyle. I mean, yeah, Corver. we were just talking about. I would, okay, the, I, the thing that I just don't want to do with Corver. I I'm, I love the Hawks and what they're doing. I mean, there's no debating that. But yeah. four four Hawks uh, players. Four be, Hawks players is just a little bit much. It's back to the uh, what like Corver's in the three point contest. That's all he really needs to do. Back to like 2004 yeah. when it was like Ben Wallace, Rip Hamilton. Rasheed Wallace and Chauncey Billups yeah. all on the Eastern Conference. That was a little overkill. Uh, it's kind of like okay. That was, those were the days of the Detroit Pistons, That's where that was uh, quintessential that, Pistons. Yeah, that was Piston esque. It was really, it really was, and you know, that's when they won a few championships. But got another live tweet in who just said uh, Brandon Knight is a possibility. That. Yeah, yeah, Brandon I mean, Knight, that's true. Yeah, Brandon Knight's having a great year. Brandon Knight's been having and a stellar that, and, year. And then that would also fit the guard position that you need. And, you know, uh, you know he replaced, he replaced uh, uh, you know, in uh, from, where was he before? So he went over to Milwaukee. Uh, he's in Milwaukee now, but I can't he remember. He was yeah. in Detroit. Detroit, that's where it was. Him and Brandon Jen- or was it Brandon Jennings switched pretty yeah, much? Yeah, it was. They yeah. pretty much just switched. So, yeah, I, I mean, I can see any of those three uh it'll exactly. be kind of interesting because they all are deserving but uh mm-hmm. you know like logan was saying i don't really have any problem with the east yeah. selection it's the east yeah. let, let them be yeah. yeah all right all right well let's, let's get tra- to the transfers uh, over to the west all right let's get into this all right we got uh, get done with we got lamarcus and, commendable yeah. speaking of which side side note before we move on how much do you think he's actually going to play or do you believe he should even play I saw a he'll stat. play a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, he averages 13 minutes a game in the All Star game, so I think I'll play some. Yeah. yeah, he'll play. I some. I mean, for me personally, I would not have been pissed if he would have chose to sat out this All Star. Yeah, just three days to give the thumb a rest. I don't know, get some acupuncture for it. I don't know what you do for it. you had the thumb injury. Would three days have benefited? Uh, probably not that much, okay. especially with. Well, but yeah, his is worse than mine, so it's, it's kind of hard to. Whatever. As long yeah. as he doesn't push it too much, I'd rather. Yeah. Save the good thumb minutes for you know the season, but it's Lamarcus. Yeah, I mean, it can't hurt anything. Of course, he's going to play. It can't hurt him. Hurt him. Right. So, congrats, to Lamarcus. Yeah. All right. After the Lamarcus, we got James Harden, <sighs> Kevin Durant. He deserves it, but uh, no. Tim Duncan. Get off my ship. Tim Duncan. Get off my ship. <laughs> Clay Thompson. Okay. Chris Paul. Get off my ship. And Russell Westbrook. Get off my ship. So you don't like <laughs> any of the Western Conference reserves? No. Let's just point right, out that okay. Jake is doing the soundboard. Okay, right okay, now. okay, okay. So let's just. Uh, I did not do it for James Harden deserves it. Chris okay. Paul does not deserve it, and Kevin Durant does not deserve it. I'll take back Russell Westbrook. He does deserve it. What about Tim? You did it to Tim. Okay, if you look at it. Okay, so here we go. This I, is okay. This is my <sighs> opinions on what's going on. Uh, we t- t- the two snubs that we got going on is Lillard and Demarcus Cousins. Yeah, Demarcus. Oh. Um, you, could, you could argue for others, but yeah, okay. okay. Those are the two main ones that I the think almost biggest. everyone agrees you know, with. Even, you could you that. could argue Connolly too, but not even Con- I don't think Connolly. Uh, I think you can. If anything, I think Ellis would be ahead of Conley, in my opinion. Ellis has been consistently snubbed his whole life, yeah. so that I feel like the Ellis is just an afterthought these days. Like, oh, Monte and, didn't and make a, it. And another, okay. another guy that I think would be ahead of <clears> uh, <throat> is Mike Conley is uh, Eric Butso. Hmm. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I, I agree. Bledsoe's having a, a, yeah. a fantastic year fantastic down in Phoenix. Year. Fantastic. It, it, it's a guarantee for the West that you're going to get snubbed. Uh, it's just, you know. There's just too many he, good players. Here in, or- in, here in Oregon, everybody's yeah. going to be very, you know, salt- Opinionated. very salty. It was like it was like you went to Wetzel's Pretzels and you dipped the pretzel in extra butter and then you just just like took like at least 20 shakes of salt onto that pretzel. And that's the summarization of Portland. <laughs> I wasn't of, sure where that was going. I wasn't sure where that was going. We were talking about okay. being salty. That's, I got you. That's no, super I got salty. You. I got you. I like it. It's like popcorn mixed with what's another salty food? Pretzels. It's like a popcorn pretzel salt mix. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. with the two snubs yeah. of, Lil- of Lillard and Demarcus, <laughs> yeah. I I think both of them should have got in. Yeah. And but here is the one the one person I, I it's tough to have him off there just because. He's been a face of the NBA for uh, yeah. one of the faces. It's Chris Paul. I thought you were going to say Kevin. Yeah. I, see, this is uh, – I was when I was watching NBA uh, on TNT the other night, and it was the sh- – I was Ernie versus uh, uh, Chuck, mm. and who should have gone on there. Yeah. Dur- it, 
I understand where both those guys are coming from. And then I try to think of, and I would want, like, I know, like, the NBA All-Star game is corrupt, pretty much. It, it should be based off stats. And yeah. and then if, especially, and then another thing should be based off how many games you have played. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I think is something that could be completely fix this whole situation? Obviously, the fan voting has been one of the most criticized aspects to the All-Star game for the last five years. But what do you guys think if, instead of just fan voting for anybody you want, they selected, pre-selected a pool of players on their website or whatever, and you could only vote for the selected players? I mean, Jeremy Lin should, almost, should have never been in the discussion. It's almost the same thing. It's... I feel like you could streamline because it a little, all these same guys it a little still bit be, better. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean it might help a little. No but. matter what, like even though you know you see Kobe's production's gone down over the yeah, years. Yeah, no, Kobe wouldn't have even been in the pool. But that's the thing, Kevin as Durant long wouldn't as, have been in the pool as long as Kobe is in the league. Like, you can't do. You, you just can't have him in a pool with one of the best players of all time. And, like it's that's that wouldn't I'm be. Saying a, you don't put Kobe in that pool. No, but that's what I'm, what I'm saying is you would have to because as long no, as you don't. It's yeah. about performance. Why would you have to put Kobe in the voting pool? Because that's pretty much what, like, what it should be off is based off stats, and the fans should not even have a vote at all. So you, you think so getting rid of the vote so that gets rid of the Kobe thing altogether? But you're, what you're saying is your your pool thing. Whatever you got your little situation in your head here is that it's almost the same situation as voting in players. How? Because that's what the that's what the fans are doing. Their fans are voting players in. That's what you have doing. But it's right more now. controlled. It's more controlled, but it's pretty much the same thing. That's you still though. have all these same guys, though. That's the thing. Yeah, like... It, okay, so what do you propose? I, what I would propose is that it's just based off stats and, like, NBA... Not even, like... NBA, not even coaches, but maybe, like, executives or... Not executives, but... Or a combination of yeah, them. I yeah. don't know. I think that there should be a minimum number of games you've there played. There should be... There's, okay, so you know how... Uh, like NCAA tournaments uh, in college, and they gather, uh, you know, who plays who. There yeah. should be like, and there should be like even the uh, college football, and they they have like their own little board of committee of who plays or who goes into the national championship game. Or there should be a thing like that for an all star game where a, a committee gets together and they decide. Yeah, uh, and that and they're looking so like just based off stats. Maybe even like a blind type thing where you just put the stats up. You, you yeah. know how they do that with the the blind test with the NCAA teams, yeah. who's in, who's out. That, that yeah. Sort of like I'll like I'll admit as a Spur, like a Spurs fan, I, all Spurs don't have spectacular numbers. But if you look at if you look at you know Tim Duncan, he's averaging uh, it's like a fourteen and ten around there, fifteen and ten. And for his age, it's amazing. It's just like wow, you know, is Tim Duncan even getting older? And but if you're going off stats, that going has as, no if if, factor. Yeah, and it, but he's like, oh, Tim Duncan's the best player, or be, one of the best power, power forwards of all time. You have to put him in there. But if the committee gets together and they like... That logic like, would be gone. The, the logic would be gone and... Kobe uh, wouldn't be in there. Kobe Kevin would, wouldn't be in there. Yeah. It, it'd be better. It would be... And, like, you know, players like DeMarcus Cousins, like, I, I, I'm a, I, I haven't been a DeMarcus Cousins fan. He's a he's both a, of us have both hated on him on this he, show. You can't deny the talent. He's a goon, I'm, but he's like he's just a goon. But if you look at it, uh, DeMarcus Cousins, it's just uh, <laughs> Jake's proud of me because he's laughing because I'm calling DeMarcus a goon. But uh, if you look at it, DeMarcus has better stats overall. It, than most people, than, than most of the uh, most, most of the power forward centers in this All Star game, uh, so I just it, but then you just get into the conversation of team wins and yeah. how important they are to team success. And the Kings are sixteen and twenty eight or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and it's and there's no there has, set way. It's all biased. Yeah, there has to be a fine line of what the All Star game should be about. Yeah. Exactly, because it's all just kind of popularity and yeah, I, I don't know. It's yeah, but if I had to fix this with the fan voting right now, of how it should go down, overall, Damian is having a better year than Chris Paul. I Hands agree. down, you and, cannot. But but, yeah. but don't. And, but it's but it's, it's this, so hard. But looking at Chris Paul, he's still having a great season. And yeah, that's it's just thing. not Chris Paul. It's not. It's not Chris. It's, it's not, not a, a, it's a not normal a Chris Paul. Quintessential Chris. What you would think 
for Chris Paul. But if you look at the Clippers, like the Clippers have been one of the better teams in the NBA this year. So you, it's yeah. like, oh well, you kind of you know you you want like, uh, yeah. Blazers I, Clippers have the same record right now. Yeah, if you look at so. you, gotta have a high market team in in the All Star game. You gotta put one of the best players in there, and it's just a uh, you know it's just a tough situation. Uh, you know, there's a case where Kevin Durant could be left off there. Uh, but, but y- then you're getting into the you know he's a top two player in the league, and yeah. it's just like do you leave him out and for an All Star game that's yeah you know for the fans and he's won MVP a couple times yeah five times yeah it, it, it's just Kevin Durant it's so hard Kevin Durant will he's, you know he's the face of the NBA he could probably come out there and win the MVP but then he yeah. also could come out there and not be in the All Star game so yeah, yeah. exactly yeah so it's just a tough situation and you just gotta I think the the like a board of a committee of the NBA All Star is just an easy way. It's an easy fix, but that's just. That's I don't it, think. Sadly, I don't think they'll ever get close to. No, doing that. it's not. It's all about incorporating the fans, incorporating you know. Yeah, but let Jeremy Lin get his two hundred thousand votes from. But personally, what I think was what not should, say it, if I had to choose, if I had a situation, I would put Damian ahead of Chris Paul and Demarcus Cousin replaces Kobe Bryant in the All Star game. That would be a perfect. I think that would been a, that would have been a good solution. That's what I wanted, but yeah. But I can see that. That that's just the only situation that I could kind of think that'd be a, almost a win-win. It's but just except, except for Clipper fans, and then that happens. Then Clipper fans let get, Clipper fans be pissed. They're all fake anyway. Half of them have only been here for two years. Yeah, yeah. I and and then there's the whole Tim Duncan thing. I know we've already talked about that, and I know y- you know he's one of the best players of all time. There's no denying yeah, that at all. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like I, I know that you'll probably be. Little salty for me saying this, but like, you could also see someone like Demarcus getting in over Tim Duncan. Oh no, no that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. he did just okay. say that. Yeah. Herp, derp, 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 derp. <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking. That I know what you mean. I know you wanted yeah. Tim Duncan still on. No, no, no. And then okay, he was, I guess he was I giving different scenarios. scenarios. Okay. That was good. Well, but, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I could see that just because fifteen and ten is. You yeah. Know, I mean, he's one yeah. of the best of all time, but. 15 and 10 is 15 and 10. It's not as good as the 23 and 13 that DeMarcus is putting up every game. So, yeah. I don't know. It's hard. It's I think in a perfect super tough situation. situation, it would have been Damian in, even Chris Paul in, maybe Tim Duncan out, DeMarcus. I, I don't know. Now, if we want to move uh, on to the, the Damian thing, Grant, all of Portland fans, we, we saw what Twitter did uh, Thursday night. It, it was It was on fire. Yeah, I love the uh, the Portland pl- uh, police. Yes, tweet. that was a good tweet. <laughs> Do I still have it word for word? But anyway, uh, the Portland police had a tweet. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know exactly what they said, but it made it to like Sports Center and stuff, where they said they were opening a an, an open investigation into the robbery of Damian Lillard. I laughed so hard. Good old Portland police, comedic Portland police, good guys. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. all of Portland's reaction was unanimous. Shocked, pissed off, angry. Just when you don't get in as a starter, that's something you can't control, right? You know, fan voting. Yeah. But when you get snubbed by your peers, as in the Western Conference coaches, that's something you take to heart. And then, and then again today, when Damian, you know, I'm not mad at Demarcus for getting in. I mean, yeah, congrats to Demarcus. Congrats to Demarcus. Kind of it kind of sucks image. that we have to look at it in a comparison situation because he does deserve it, but they both deserve it. So. Demarcus, you know, Adam Silver made the decision to put him in instead of Kobe. So that's two back-to-back days of being snubbed by your NBA peers. And all I can say is, watch out. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like whenever someone doubts him, he just does better. And I mean, I, we want to read a little statement. He did delete it off Instagram. I, I think he I don't reposted know why. it. I don't know Do you why. Think he reposted he, it. I, think I, he I was confused as why well. I deleted. But he said, uh, "I just want to thank the coaches who feel I wasn't good enough, the fans who didn't think I wasn't good enough, and Adam Silver for also not thinking I was good enough. It wasn't. It isn't unfamiliar territory for me. It's actually what my life has been inspired by. I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel disappointed and disrespected. But it's not too much to handle. Hey. Yeah. I mean, when you look at it, he was." You know, small college, he comes in, wins rookie of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, people thought he might have a down sophomore year. He comes in as an all-star. Yeah, um, unbelievable. And then there's the Team USA cut. Add uh, a little wood to his little saying, wood to the fire. Stats this year. I mean, who knows? I think he's going to come out just on a tear. It's just half crazy to think from a year ago, 2014 now, we had a player competing in every single event. Mm-hmm. 
and he's now not in a single event. Yeah. It's crazy. Shout out. Uh, if we do, yeah, I was just about to say, if we want to take a pause, so congratulations to Wesley uh, for the three point contest. We do. You know, we got two Blazers participating. Or Marco Bellinelli, if you really want to. Okay. Shout outs. <laughs> Marco trying to, trying to, he, had his, he had his time to shine. Trying to repeat. He's trying to get the two P, but whatever. Let's go, <laughs> let's go bow and arrow. Yeah, I mean, that that should be fun. Congrats to Wesley. He's earned it. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's. You also see the national kind of outbreak. Charles Barkley was. Very salty on air last night. Very too. salty. I wish I had a, a little sound by this sh- 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 sound bite of salt. That'd be, that'd be a terrible sound bite. Yeah. <laughs> now no one would know, no one was, know what it was. <laughs> again, I thought that was a cat screech, but <laughs> I'm mistaken once again. <laughs> Classic me. Anyway, Charles Barkley had some very strong words of opinions. Even you know the fellow NBA peers, Brandon Jennings, Draymond Green, they all said Ricky uh, Rubio. Ricky Rubio, we're all in Damian support. Pretty shocked. They all say uh, today's game is must watch for NBA fans. We'll just got to see what happens. Yeah, the thing is, Damian is not the type of player to come out and just try to use his own personal agenda to get back at people. You it know, just, he's it all ca- about the team just, success. It kind of just happens organically, honestly. It, which is awesome what we as want. a fan what and we want. is what we want. I mean, if he goes out there and we win and he scores 50-plus points, that would yeah. be ideal. But you, you got to be fooling yourself if you don't think that – the the players on the Blazers are going to give him a, a few extra looks tonight. Yeah, exactly. He's going to get those pat. He's going to get those. I looks. think he gets thirty plus, but you know, definitely some maybe, assists. Maybe make a nice little uh, statement post game. Yeah. So. So that's all. That's pretty much. Before we move on, we did just get one more live tweet in that says, from a coaching standpoint, Demarcus Cousins is quote unquote the guy that you game plan versus Damian Lillard is the second option on Portland. Which, okay. Kind of disagree with that, but makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean, I get what it's saying. If you're saying he's a second option in the Lamarcus standpoint, but in the All Star game, it's completely different. But then you're also also going by team wins too, and Demarcus hasn't had nearly the. the, If you're going by team wins, he's not that guy. It's back to the corrupt system. (laughs) It's the corrupt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's all going back to the system. There's two different spectrums, and yeah, two ways to view it. That's all. He may be the number one guy, but they're twelve games under five hundred, where the Blazers are. Yeah, it's just it's. You know, it's just, just a, a just a, a NBA is an, in, an interesting, interesting sport. That's all we got to say. So, uh, all the Blazer fans out there, 430 today, Atlanta, number one team in the East versus Portland. See what Damien does. Wood to the fire. I don't know. Should be a great game. Should be a great game. We're going to take a quick last break of the show. And when we come back, we're going to end it out with the uh, most anticipated part of the show, Super Bowl 49. Stay tuned. This is Second String Sports. Live tweet us with hashtag Second String Sports. About to get into the Super Bowl talk. Let's get it. Stressed out? Need a break? The MindSpot Caps is a unique sanctuary where you can soothe your mind, body, and spirit, as well as learn skills for health and well-being. The MindSpot is free and open to all students, faculty, and staff. To make a half-hour or hour appointment, call 541-737-2131. Half-hour consultations with a Caps member on how to use the MindSpark equipment are also available. And we're back. Second String Sports about to get into the meat of the show. Super Bowl 49. So fine. Like wine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Rob Siren? Is that a pop siren? Yeah. I wish I had a Katy Perry sound by. That would be really applicable right now. Baby, you're a firework. Come on. <laughs> pop siren. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sunday, Super Bowl 49, Seattle Seahawks versus the New England Patriots. I know last show we had a little, uh, little discussion on the deflate gate, but that's out the window, thank you. Thank goodness. I think we've all heard enough of that. I think we've all heard enough of the balls. Sorry, there I, was, I just had to get one term. There in. was a, a report uh, we saw that the like a you know a manager went into the bathroom with twenty four footballs and yeah. came back out with them. But maybe he just likes to wash them in the bathroom toilet water. I don't know. <laughs> Leave the guy yeah. alone. So it's just yeah. <laughs> I think everybody's kind of uh, it's Deflate Gate. 
Yeah. Little Brady had his Thank little whine, whining fest, wanted to ask for, you know, my feelings are hurt. <laughs> I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Go try on your Uggs, Brady. Anyway, back to the game. Super Bowl 49, Seahawks, Patriots. There's been a, been a lot of noise this week uh, from Media Day. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah. Or lack of noise from Marshawn that, Lynch. <laughs> better way to put it? True. 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 Man. <laughs> Classic rap siren always making, his, always making his appearance. So if you guys have been keeping up with sports on ESPN or SportsCenter at all, you've You've heard about Marshawn Lynch. Let's just put it this way. Girls and parents and the older generation who don't even know about football, per se, or don't know specific players, have been talking about Marshawn Lynch. I've seen girls on Facebook posting the thing and be like, I don't know who this guy is, but it's just so funny. So <laughs> I think it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a marketing tactic. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. He's doing it for fun, and it's getting them the attention that they want. So I'll admit. You he's know. wearing his own gear. He's wearing his own gear, beast mode, rocking yeah. that beast mode hat. People it's, were asking, like, uh, you know, Marshawn, where do you get beast mode? Where, do, where can I buy a beast mode hat like you have on right now? And be like, beastmode.com. The best thing is when uh, yeah. the lady yeah. at the lady in one of the press conferences was like, you've been warned by the NFL over the past two days that you, you, you'll get a fine for the unlicensed gear on, on that hat. Do you have a statement? All he did was adjust the hat tighter on the set. And she goes, really? That's your statement? And yep. then he just he just adjusts it again and goes beastmode.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does not care. It's marketing. It's marketing. That just like funny. just like Richard Sherman, uh Robert Kraft said Richard Sherman's a marketing genius. They know how to bring the attention to themselves and they thrive off of it. The the attention does not hurt them in the slightest. Pete yep. Carroll loves it. He loved it at USC. He loves it in Seattle. So it's it's been a whirlwind all week if you uh Saw the Marshawn, Conan O'Brien, Gronk vid. Oh, uh, that was probably got a solid laugh. It's uh, up there for one of my funny or the funniest yeah. on- online videos. I it's gotten like a million views really in like twelve funny. hours. Yeah. If you if you guys don't know what we're talking about, just go to YouTube and type in Conan O'Brien, Mortal Kombat, Marshawn Lynch, yeah, it, Gronkowski, whatever. If you've uh, seen any of the other Conan yeah. videos though, the that are like Clueless Gamer, Clueless Gamer, they're so they're funny. all so funny. They're so funny. This is their funniest one yet though. <laughs> Classic, classic Conan and Marshawn and yeah. Gronk. Like I'm not even that big of a Conan fan, but he, like all the segment, like little segments that he does. His like little that, segments are gold. He's yeah. perfect with that little t- com- comedic time and whatever. Yeah. I can't even speak. We're <laughs> get, we're getting bombarded with tweets right now, though. Uh, I guess we can take a pause from the Super Bowl just to get these last ones in. Grant Van Dyke sh- uh, sent in a live tweet that says, Dame greater than CP3. He's the most clutch player in the league. Check the numbers on a top five team. Also, DeMarcus C- Cousins deserves it too, though. And <laughs> at the NBA hipster, hit us up with Dame greater than Durant and DeMarcus Cousins greater than Duncan. <laughs> Silver didn't check the stats, apparently. Hashtag second string sports. And then Grant, again, I don't know why, said, and Dame greater than CP3. So dumb. Even though he already said that. And then NBA hipster again. Dame has the highest win share, seven, among players not named to the all-star team. Good point. They're going ham right now. All right. Shout out Grand NBA hipster. All right. We're done with NBA. <laughs> so if you want to hop back into it, talk about the Super Bowl. Seahawks. Seahawks Pats. Yep. Anyway, Marshawn Lynch has created the buzz this week. Just leading up to this game. It's, man, this game is highly... Highly anticipated. And this is a it's a not, it's a matchup that could go is probably one of the most Well, it's a matchup that we haven't really seen in the past no. few years. It's where the best teams in both conferences are actually facing are, each are other. Are actually playing each other for once. In the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's gonna be Actually, well, I guess last year against the Broncos. Uh, yeah, last year. I don't know. Pretty, they were technically, but, but looking back at it, their talent was nowhere near I'm trying to think, was Denver the top the top seed of last year? I can't remember. I don't but think they were. I thought they were maybe I don't, two, but weren't th- I think the Patriots still were. I thought they were one or two. Yeah. I don't know. We'll I, see. But yeah, but they got just, de- regardless. They got destroyed, and yeah, this year is going to be. Com- I'm. It's going to be completely different. Yeah, I think it's a no doubt that both these teams were the best teams in both conferences. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a ball out fest. I'm, yeah, I. Uh, I honestly, I. It's for me to try to pick a winner. It's it's really tough for me. Uh, I. It's tough. It's a toss up. Honestly, it, it's a toss up game. Flip a coin. That's well, your prediction. Because I could see, 
I could see Tom going out there and being clutch and probably own, owning the Seahawks like secondary, but at the same time I see the secondary owning Tom Brady. It's so it's so it, yeah, it, it's either way. It's this flip flops back in my head and then go and I go back to it and defense wins championships. And if you look at this Patriots defense is still pretty good. It's uh, not as good, but they're still good. Yeah, it's true. But I think I, I'm going to go with the Legion of Boom on this one. It's just, uh, but it's a really tough decision for me. I, I've kind of s- sat at night and pondered who do I think will, do I want to win the Super Bowl, and who do I think will. And I think I'm kind of conclusions after the Seahawks uh, Packers game. I think it's almost destiny Jet the Seahawks go back to back. Because just out of pure luck, and how they won against the Packers, I just think it's going to happen. It's almost like you can't re- you can't regress from that type of win. I mean, Russell can't go back. And I think he's prepared. I, yeah, it, you know, Russell. I don't know a guy that doesn't I mean, that doesn't deserve it more than Russell. Uh, no, he's just he's just a great guy. He's Russell. I, uh, I I'm Aww. gonna go. I'm proud of Logan having a moment here. Yeah, he's owning up to his moment. Uh, Shout out Louis Page. It's, it's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be like just for Seahawk fans living in you know living in the Northwest, not being a Seahawk fan, but growing up watching the Seahawks because they're on TV twenty four seven. You uh, you basically yeah. lived here. Uh, <laughs> basically lived in Seattle. You basically lived in Seattle. Uh, it's gonna be somewhat annoying listening to Seahawk fans. You know, for Good. another year back to back champion. I just think it's gonna happen, and I'm gonna go with the score prediction of a 27, Ooh. 21 Seahawks. That is almost exactly what I predicted on the sports TV show the other night. I'm gonna go. I, everything you said, I completely agree with. After that Green Bay game, I, I don't think it's possible that I don't think it, it's like you said, destiny. Yeah. You know, as much as I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, it will play a factor. Uh, if you guys don't know the situation, uh, Richard Sherman's girlfriend is pregnant, due any day now. And Pete Carroll just said, you know, it's up to him if the baby decides to come. You know, it's up to him if he wants to play or not. But honestly, I think if the baby comes Sunday, I think he's playing. I It's Richard. All I, I got to say is... Uh Stay Plan, in there. Planned or unplanned, terrible timing by, by Richard Come on, Sherman. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, nine months ago, did you really not think, if we happen to... Nah. Nah. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> Rich, come on. Rich, come on. Yeah, gotta, there's a PSA we could play you, for that, you, but Rich, come on. You went to Stanford. You need, you need to understand. You're smarter than that, Rich. Yeah. I mean, do the math. <laughs> yeah, do the math. Do the math. It's do nine math. months. You went to Stanford, Rich. Come on. Come on. February. Yeah. <laughs> anyway... I don't know. What do you you guys think if that situation even comes up? Do you think he'll play? I think he'll still play. I think he'll still play. I think, I I think, think his girlfriend will be like, also. just play. Yeah. You know, you'll have 18 years. You're making millions. Yeah. You know, it's, it's your job. But Richard Sherman or not, like I said, yeah, I think it's destiny. Tom Brady, you can't deny the best, one of the best to ever do it. If not, you know, people say the best, but I don't know. They I, do. He's considered one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to dispute. Especially if he oh, wins no. this game. Yeah, if yeah. he wins this game, I think it's hands down he's the best quarterback <laughs> of all time. And especially losing, you know, the past Super Bowls. Super funny. Uh, I love it when they but, lose. <laughs> it, uh, it, but Tom Legacy is... The Tom it, Legacy will always be strong. Yeah. but Deflate gate or not, the balls will always be thrown. Spy gate. There was Spy a, gate. A gate. Yeah. Giselle gate. <laughs> hair gate. <laughs> Hey, he does have some awesome flow. Yeah. You model it after Tom? Yeah, I love Tom. I I've, like bearded Tom. I've had, uh, you know, I've had conversations with friends of, uh, you know, if you had a, a man crush circle, yeah. who would be in your man crush? I, you know, I've had, and if I've had Tom Brady in my man crush circle just because he's just a great looking guy. And I think he'd be fun. He'd be fun. <laughs> he'd be fun to hang out with. You get, add a couple comedians, add a couple actors, add a. <laughs> I am just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we had to be dry, put Damien and Tinkle and mine. Oh, Tinkle's easily. Yeah, <laughs> Tinkle's in there. Oh yeah, I'm. You this know, is Silver Fox. Yeah. <laughs> Please still come on our show, Tings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> we'll give you a cup. Just the, like, wouldn't it be so cup. fun if you had a, like if you had a fantasy just hangout sesh with a whole yeah, bunch of guys with yeah. any yeah. if uh, any but any guys you wanted to hang out with. That's a that's for a, that's for a whole nother show. Maybe yeah. a whole just like yeah yeah man well, the, crush special yeah second string. That was poorly worded. The man crush special. Uh, that's pretty much what we were talking yeah. about. But I know, but it I just think sounds... Logan's with me here. I'm I'm there with Grant. Boo, boo Jake, boo Jake. <laughs> yeah, boo. All right, but back to the game. Back to back the to, game. Back to the game. Back Super the game. Bowl Forty Nine. I I kind of went. Um, yeah, Grant. What's your prediction? Yeah. We did get some live tweets in from the show uh, from big time fan Jorge, who says, "I'm just here so I don't get fined." And it is Tom. Tom Brady is due. Yeah, I yeah. mean he is definitely uh, is. Probably still salty from the last time he was in Arizona. Tom Brady's just been permanently salty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for the – you remember back to the Ohio State game, I, I went with the destiny pick there too um, with Cardale, and that ended up working out. But for the Super Bowl, obviously you, it you can go either way. You did call that Cardale. Either Cardale. way, it can go either way. I mean, everyone knows that. I, you can definitely see the Seahawks D showing up. But I think Tom Brady wins this one. Uh, something like 31, 24 Patriots, yeah, somewhere and, in there. And honestly, I mean, like, it could, but think about that. It's like, yeah, I can definitely see that happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. And I will, can though. definitely see the the Seahawks. Yeah, I'm a Seahawks fan. Yeah, yeah, true. Huh? I mean, I'm a bird till I die. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what a Seahawk sounds like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that was, like a seagull. That was a savage seagull. Score yeah. prediction. Would you say you uh, like a six-point win? 31, 24, Pats. Seven point. Okay. I I'm gonna go 27, 20. 27, 20 or 27, 17. I'm gonna go. It's either it's either gonna be ten point or seven point. I'm giving it to the Hawks. I think Russell Russell goes for probably his best game yet. I honestly don't think Russell has that great of a game. Really? Think, you don't? You or, see him repeating Green Bay? Not repeating, like not at that as bad, like interception wise. But yeah. I don't see. I, maybe he throws like one touchdown for like yeah, one hundred seventy-five yeah. yards, and maybe like over. That's true. Like maybe like one hundred and one rushing. I can see him going for like, a few like interceptions. Like that. Revis will. I think Revis will snag one or two. Yeah, I mean, kind of that typical Russell does enough to. Yeah, it does enough. Get him by and has more. Okay, that's not rest. typical. It, it's it's relatively typical. It's, yeah, he's had a few games I mean, like if that you this look year. At, if we want to talk about that, I mean, think of all the other quarterbacks that don't get their team by and lose the game for their team. I mean, I'm giving Russell Wilson all the respect. Oh, I'm no, just saying too. that he he finds ways to win when yeah. they have to, but he doesn't do anything. That's true. I understand what you're saying, Grant. Huge stats-wise. He has a few games here. Fans I'm not salty. Here. I'm just telling the truth. You can't deny it. Well, you're kind of Wetzel's pretzel's soul yeah. right now. Nah, you, I'm just excited. Bit, I don't have Kaepernick on my team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> ooh. It's true. Hey, I'm giving Russell respect. I just don't think he has. I think I agree. I agree with Logan. Just you know, enough to does get it, him by, but he does doesn't enough just to win. That's excel what it, like crazy, yeah. like one of the best stats wise. Marshawn will ever. probably be over 100 yards and a few touchdowns. I think he will. I mean, probably one or two. I mean, maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'll give him two. It's probably like uh, I think Curse probably has. Pro- Curse probably snags one in. No, it's probably going to be. Uh, it's probably be the tight end Wilson. He's probably going to catch. Luke. Like, yeah, Luke Wilson. He's probably going to catch like two touchdowns and something weird is going to happen in the Super Bowl. Like something, <laughs> something like that. Weird. Yeah, it's I, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's bound to happen. Something it's bound to happen. Yeah. You excited for uh, Katy Perry? I think it'll be better than last year. I like Katy Perry. She'll do something weird. Something She's a cool. good performer. She's a good performer. She got cool costumes. I'm just here so I don't get cool. Cloth. She's just she, yeah, she does. You see what she was wearing yesterday? The football. Yeah, it, it was on the, cool. She was it at was. the college game day. Yeah. Yeah. Katie, what's up? <laughs> you know, we just had to talk about Katy Perry to divert from five minutes ago because we did get a tweet that says the man crush stuff is starting to worry me. So, sorry, fans. We're about Katy Perry too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much uh, all we have for the Super Bowl. Any last thoughts? I think it's pretty, pretty much the most anticipated. It's gonna be a great Super game. Bowl in the last two three years. It's gonna be a great. Well, game. last year's Super Bowl was pretty hyped up. Like I'm, I'm. This is more hyped up than last year. It it has been Deflate Gate and everything like that. It, the Deflate it, it, Gate, the Marshawn thing. I'm not like not to tell you like b- before the game happened last year. It was still yeah. a pretty big game. 
Oh, because it was huge. The Peyton, best, the, the best defense versus the best offense, and mm-hmm. uh, no, it was the, just the, such a letdown. No, yeah, but this year is definitely the two best teams, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be an awesome game. Before I uh, before we wrap up the official Seahawks talk, I just want to give a shout out to young Jeff Lowe. On Monday, if the Seahawks win, tattoo needles will be penetrating his shoulder for the first time in history. Wow, <laughs> Jeff, is he, uh, is he really gonna do that? What? Is he really going to do that? He's 100%. In? He's already visited the tattoo parlor and everything. Oh, okay. Wow. He's got it all set up. Monday comes. If the Seahawks win, he's getting the Seahawks logo. That's it. The Super Bowl 2014, Super Bowl 2015. Is he a Seahawks Inkman. fan? He's a, me- he's a mega Seahawks fan. Oh, okay. Mega. So it's like a, it's like a thing that uh, he's fine with. It's, uh, it's not, I, I was thinking this was like a lost oh, bet. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I, would not do, I would not be that cruel. I told them, I told them you know. Blazers win. I've already said publicly that I'm getting a Blazers. I tattoo. said that with you. So. You know, me and Grant are both. I'm I'm happy to like. I love to get that. So, Seahawks tattoo. You know, if you're in Corvallis this week, see Jeff. Tell him to take show him, flash that shoulder. Go Hawks. <laughs> Logan, you gonna get a uh, Spurs tat if they win? I already have. Uh, no, you don't. I already have. Uh, no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> you can't even get it out. <laughs> I mean, you already have five tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> five different Spurs logos strategically placed. No, I have hidden one, spots giant, on your body. one giant Spurs logo, and then I have uh, championships underneath it. You... Going down low? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's enough. Super Bowl 49. It's going to be one for the ages. Please, please, even if you're not a sports fan, just, just watch it. Just watch it for the commercials or Katie. Just do it. You won't be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. True. 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 Oh, man. There it goes. Before we wrap up the show, I just want to shout out, kind of off topic here, but completely relevant. Shout out Sean Mannion. Apparently came out with the top score for quarterback accuracy going into the draft. Why does that not surprise me? Does not surprise me. Does not surprise Beaver Nation. Surprises nope. the rest of the nation. Yes. But uh, let's just see that draft stack. Oh yeah, we'll have definitely. Uh, We're gonna have NFL a huge draft NFL preview. draft show going in the spring. Get ready for that. Exactly. It's be awesome. Exactly. So thanks for listening, guys. This has been the we call it Super Bowl edition of Second String Sports every Friday, three to four p.m. on KBVR Corvallis eighty eight point seven FM. Quick last shout out: Twitter at jmcr eighty seven, Logan at LT McGinnis at Gran Ocampo. We're at Second String KBVR Facebook Second String Sports. We put up all the uh, podcasts of the show on YouTube, so Second String Sports on YouTube. Be looking out for this specific show. You know, we've been lacking a little bit lately, but for sure we're going to get back on the grind. If you want to listen to this with your buddies when you're, you know, pre-gaming, talking about the Seahawks, you can listen to us ramble on game day. So, yeah, have a good weekend. It's super sunny in Corvallis right now. Super nice. And go Beavs. Go, go Beavs. Go go Blazers. Go Beavs. No, nah, just go Beavs. Yeah, go Blazers. Go Blazers. Yeah. Go Spurs. Nah, go Beavs. Yeah. You just you just disagreed with Go Beavs. Oh crap. <laughs> 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 yeah, go Beavs. <laughs> Man, I got gotcha. you. Anyway, go Beavs as always. Check out the Arizona game. Blazer game tonight. And of course, of course, Super Bowl Sunday. Please stay tuned to that. Every week Friday, thanks for tuning in, everyone who live tweets us. We really appreciate it. More to come. I promise you guys throughout the term, hopefully some guests. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. Big things to come. This is Second String Sports. Thanks for listening. Have a good weekend. Once again, KBVR Corvallis.